Jaden. You'd be scooting around all over the neighborhood. Kids Christmas party. Show of hands. Anybody been here? How many have been with us 18 years? At the heart of what Kicks for Kids is, at the heart of what Kicks for Kids is all about. Um, I, I saw some others. Of course, you know this. You know, there are times that Caleb Miller comes into our studios here in Mount Auburn with something to say. And yeah. from what I hear, you've got a lot to say, so let's just get right to it. Look, okay, so uh, there's been some rumors around the area. Maybe we've had some cynical or, or negative conversations up here more than once this season. But you know what? I, my, the way I say it is we're just tempering Bengals fans' expectations. Okay, look, the truth is I'm not a negative person at all. And neither are these guys. Well, maybe Skinny is. I am. But, yeah, yeah, he is. But <laughs> the point is if you've got this many issues going on in the season, we're just being honest and we're just pointing out stuff. If it sounds negative, you know, if we're being real, just because it's, it's uh, negative doesn't mean it's not true. And the little things across the season that happen that go on, the problems all over the place that we'll get into, they eventually culminate to a playoff game that's not going to be won. It happened last year, same thing this year. So your point is, when you've got issues during the regular season, there's a reason for the issues. And when you get to January and everything's magnified, you don't just flip the switch and fix it. Exactly. What does this football team need to do to save their lives? What this season it contributed to them going home one and done again. Well, to save their lives, nothing. You, you, you know, you're you're really kind of in year two of rebuilding again. I mean, year one was last year. They came off a four-win season in 2010, so they took another little baby step this year. I know I'm Mr. Cynical and Mr. Negative, and I really am. But but look, I, I didn't think much of this football team going in this year, and, and they made the playoffs again. Mm -hmm. So what they need to do is continue to stay the course and keep building on it. The problem this franchise has had, Zach, over time is they get to this level and then they take steps backwards because the organization takes bad steps backwards. First half against the Houston Texans, A.J. Green was not even really on the field. Didn't go to him. How do you go about getting him involved? I mean, I, I'm thinking back to when I was a kid. When was the last time Jerry Rice was not involved for the 49ers in a playoff game and you've got Green, who's a non-factor? Right. I kept looking at the first half trying to think, why is he not involved in this in this uh, game? To me, I think it was, either a, it was either strategic or stupid, one or the other. To me, I think if it was strategic, it was like, let's let's try to get the other guys involved and let's go to him the whole second half and maybe they can't they can't stop him, which it looked like was kind of the game plan. But to me, it was part of, I think, just stupid, you know, just not going to him. Um, you know, I, I said, I think, before the game is if he if uh, Dalton doesn't throw accurately and doesn't throw on time, I think we're going to struggle. And I think, to me, that's what Fester, you know, to some of Caleb's points. To me, he didn't throw it on time and he didn't throw it accurately. You know, Gresham should have caught a few of those balls, but when you throw it up a little high and you're going across the middle, you're probably going to drop some of those balls. Because you're going to get hit. Exactly. Or you think I you're going to get hit. When you or Brad asked us last week, if they, you asked me, or I think it was Brad, 
said, if you stop Green, can you stop the Bengals this year? And I said, absolutely. Well, I said, I, I believe so. And I mean, not absolutely. But also, I said, if they block the defensive line, and I don't think they had a sack, did they, mm -hmm. against Schaub? And if the defensive line is not going to put pressure, then that exposes the weakness and the mediocrity of the secondary and the linebackers in the passing game. The tight end for uh, Daniels for Houston was their leading receiver. All across the field, Maluga couldn't cover him. That Burfitt was holding tight ends. He couldn't cover him. No offense to him. He's a rookie. He still has to be taught some of those things in zone coverage. But come on, man. And, and I mean, I don't want to be negative. I'd, ask me a positive question. Let's talk about something good or something. Okay, how do you fix it on offense? Because you can't make the case that the Bengals have not gone about trying to, whether it's Carson Palmer or Andy Dalton, put weapons around him. Orson Charles, Jermaine Gresham, Ryan Whalen, Andrew Hawkins, Armand Benz, he's gone now, A.J. Green. I think part of that's just the NFL. If you look at this season, I think we had a change of pace at running back. You had Bernard Scott, and then what do you see? He gets hurt. He was going to be and the change of pace. that was a bigger factor than right. I think anybody exactly. can really imagine. And, and then I think you also you look at a number two receiver. You've got Sanu, who's really starting to develop. We hoped he'd come earlier. You hoped Mar Marvin Jones would come earlier. Marvin Jones got hurt. You got, you know, during, earlier in the in training camp, in the first of the, of the year. Then you got Sanu, who's coming along. He's really starting and to develop. And then he gets hurt. So part of it's just the NFL. And that's where I think, you know, unfortunately, we all want to win the Super Bowl. We all want to have the best team in football. This year, I thought, to, to Skinny's point, and, you know, everybody says he's negative. He, he's a good guy. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Mm -hmm. about. At the same time, you know, it, there was a lot of positives in, in, in what happened this year. He, we did take some baby steps. And we've got a lot more to talk about, including our poll question that looks forward to 2013. It's coming up. All right, guys, put on your personnel hats. If you could only bring back one of these people, Andre Smith, Michael Johnson, Ray Maluga, Jay Gruden, or Mike Zimmer, who do you bring back? Well, I know this Ray Maluga is not going to get a vote, I don't think. But but for me, Mike Zimmer, I, I mean, he not just from a scheme standpoint, the way he gets guys to play. We talked about it on the special. I mean, he made Carlos Dunlap a player. He turned Adam Jones around. Um, that defense this year was tremendous, and it still isn't personnel-wise among the great defenses in the NFL. He did it with scheme and, and with coaching guys up. Um, boy, I'd hate to lose him and take a step backwards there, potentially. To me, I'm with Skinny. I think 100% of the answer should be Mike Zimmer. At the same time, a very close second is Jay Gruden. Um, the only reason I think Mike Zimmer is because I'm not sure who would take over that defense if Mike Zimmer leaves. If Jay Gruden leaves, you do have Hugh, ha Hugh Jackson who's kind of waiting in the wings, and he showed a propensity to develop guys in the past and be successful. So to me, I think it's, it's Mike Zimmer, and then a close second is Jay Gruden. I don't want to be boring, but I mean, you it's obvious. You want Ray Maluga? <laughs> it's no, obvious. No, it's Ray Maluga. No, not Maluga. <laughs> I mean, obviously Zimmer. I mean, I feel like, and Mayock was talking about it on the game, the commentators about how Max Zimmer should have gotten a head coaching job by now. Absolutely. No question. He should get one this season. I don't see him not getting one unless the owners are just crazy or know something about his past skeletons in his closet that we don't know. There's no other reason he should not be hired as a head coach this year. And without him there, it's a little scary. All right. I'm going to kind of break the mold. I'm going to say <laughs> Michael Johnson. Second on the team with 11 and a half sacks. I'm going to make the case, and please disagree with me, that rushing the, passer, <laughs> rushing the passer is the best thing the Bengals have done on any phase of the football field in five years. It is, but from a personnel standpoint, you can't lose Andre Smith either. I mean, you know, to me, you can lose Michael Johnson and survive. You've got ends that can still rush the passer. I'm with you, Zach. You still, I mean, that, that's what this team did best. It would still do it, I think, among the best if you lost Michael Johnson. Tremendous player, but you've got depth there. You don't have depth on the offensive line, especially at tackle. Let's talk running the football. In this contemporary NFL, throwing it all over the field, is it reasonable to expect more from Ben Jarvis Green Ellis or is he not going to get it done for you in terms of a productive uh, capability on Sundays? To me I think if you have Bernard Scott I think you have that one-two punch that makes you successful. I think any team needs to be able to keep you on your heels and if we know we have one back that we got to stop then I think you're very one-dimensional. I think if you have Bernard Scott he does give you a little bit of a shift and a little bit of a second and third gear that maybe that Ben Jarvis doesn't have. So. Caleb, you I are just <laughs> itching to say something. Oh, you know, it's what we said from the beginning. You know, I watched the games from uh, last year, the two Houston games, the playoff game and the game in the season. And actually, I was like, wow, Benson was better than I thought. And I, we hated Benson last year. Like, get rid of Benson. It's like watching Green Ellis not be good this year. It's just not a very good back. He's okay. I mean, he can run through he, big holes, like but said, I can too. Yeah, he said Benson in second gear yeah, is what said, he is. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. I mean, it's like, I was like, oh man, we never thought we'd be in the place where we were longing for Cedric Benson to come back. But it's just the Bengals had a chance to get Michael Bush. We talked about it before. With Green Ellis and Bernard Scott, it doesn't matter who's there, one, two, or three, or four. Those kind of guys are not going to give Cincinnati what they need on offense. I'm not sure which, which running back causes us to win the game yesterday, though. I agree or with that part. Yeah, exactly right. You're right about that part. Not Green Ellis. <laughs> okay. There's a difference between execution and playmaking. 
is this team just lacking playmakers? And th that's one issue. And is, is Dalton a concern? Is Dalton going to be all right here? Dalton's going to be all right. I, I mean, we're talking about a, a guy that's taken a team to a playoff two straight years. Peyton Manning didn't do it. Uh, Aaron Rodgers was staying on the sideline his first two years. Um, he, you know, Andrew Luck didn't win a playoff game today either. He got to the playoffs. Um, so, you know, it, it's not easy to do for, for quarterbacks. He's not a concern. But, no, there, there's one playmaker, one guy. One guy makes plays, number 18. That's it. You have no running back, no other wide receiver, no tight end. Nobody else makes plays. I, I think we have more <laughs> playmakers if he does throw the ball accurately and on time. I sound like a broken record, and I get that. But to me, I think what was the difference in last year and this year on some of the Daltons, I think last year he threw the ball more accurately. I, I think he's a great leader. I think he has a great opportunity to be a good player in this league. But to me, he's got to throw the ball on time and accurately. And the key is going to get you with the headset on, sending Domata with the go the round that's down it. your side. Right down the middle. That's 94. Your special, your special 94 play. is reporting yeah, his eligible. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> These guys are going to be back next week to kind of break down how you fix the Bengals in 2013. Guys, thanks so much for joining thanks. us on a Sunday night. You know, if the reports are accurate, Gruden is going to have four head coaching interviews in like five days. You've worked your whole career and you get back to back to back to back. The poll question. Gruden, does he get a head coaching job? Does Zimmer get a head coaching job? Do they both get a job, or do both come back? I think Zimmer comes back for whatever reason, and I, I'm not privy to this, but it seems to be he's just not dynamic when it comes to the interview process. And, you know, at the end of the day, the sad part is owners don't like good football coaches a lot of times. They like the guy who's going to be able to win the press conference. There's no doubt about that. And Mike is just too honest sometimes for his own good. Uh, I think he should. I do think Gruden gets a head coaching job. I think there's just too many chances for him not to hit one of these. Based on our discussions about the offense and how well they did not perform this year, I think Zimmer should get the opportunity. I, I, and I agree. Right. I think he I, should I, get I, it. I think we all agree on this. I think Zimmer should get the opportunity. I, I don't know Gruden. what else he has to do. Right. I, I, to he Zim has to be more dynamic, to unfortunately. Skin, to Skinny's point, I think a lot of these owners and a lot of these people, they're hiring consultants. They're doing all these different things. They're trying to run it like the, the business world runs theirs, and they're going for that flash in the pan. They're going for somebody that's going to sell tickets, and that's really all they're focused on. They're focusing on or the dollar. Or even go the safe route, and that's right. a lot of times he's not a safe guy because right. he's pretty honest, and that scares them. But Jay Gruden, um, you know, I mean, he does have interest. I, I was very interested last year. This year, I think he needs to go prove himself a year. I, I really would like to see both of them come back, both him and Zimmer. I agree with, with what both of both these guys are saying, but the thing that, that's really important for fans that, that to know is if Gruden leaves, it's probably okay, and if Zimmer leaves, then run for the hills and exactly. pick another team to follow because <laughs> it, it might just go crazy in Cincinnati. If Zimmer leaves, I don't know how many points are going to be scored next year, but the scoreboard might not go high enough. So. I just don't know who you replace him with. That, like, <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly. a scary thing. I mean, you've got Hugh Jackson. If you've got replacements on the offensive side, right. the defensive side, they worked hard to get this guy to stick around. Okay, if Zim comes back on defense, how do you go about making it even better? It's a top 10 defense right now. Well, number one, and I know Doug will nudge me, but I think Caleb will applaud this. you got to <laughs> let Ray Malouda go. He is a free agent. You move Burfick to the middle. He did start, I believe, 35 games in college there. And there are a lot of offensive or outside line Backers offense, outside linebackers in free agency. Connor Barwin did not have a very good year. He's more of a pass rusher, but he's one. Another guy that actually is a little bit under the radar, Daryl Smith of Jacksonville. He got hurt for most of this year, but came back, played the last few games. He's a 4-3 outside linebacker. This is a 4-3 scheme, so you're not having to have him learn different stuff. To me, that's a big thing. The other part, I know this is hard because this is a strength. I think you have enough depth up front to let Michael jo Johnson walk in and use that money in the secondary. They need safety help. And Deshaun Goldson, who uh, it was a pro bowler this year for, and not all pro player this year actually for San Francisco, first team all pro guy, he's going to cost you. But boy, he's first team all pro for a reason. To me, I think, um, obviously, I think our, our front four was the, was the strength of us. And I think when we look at uh, who we are and what we need to work on, I think it's, I do think you have to do something with the middle linebacker. So I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you with Maluga. I think we need to have some kind of help in the middle of the entire field. And the, I think the only problem is there is, is the only middle linebacker available is Brian Urlacher. Right. Do you want to go that route? I would. I'd be fine. I would, would, fine, you with really? fine would you I'm really? Fine with, I'm fine with Maluga, but I'm saying I think I would change the middle of this defense. I would change Maluga. And I give you that part. Whether you move somebody else in, and I think I would do something at safety. And I think by doing that, I think it helps. You know, I think we've got good enough corners out there. I think we've got some good help. But to me, I would just I would work on the middle of the field, the guys who are who are leading. And I think in that case, I think it makes this defense better. You've been waiting days for this. I know, exactly. How, are you sure? I know it. I, don't know. I wonder about voodoo. I'm a little scared <laughs> exactly. right now. Hey, well, he looks like I guess a, we'll talk about it. He looks like a warlord. It. Look, okay, so uh, the main thing, uh, the defense, you can't really say you need to fix the defense because of how well they did this year. 
Okay, I guess you could say if <laughs> Marvin Lewis, if we're talking about Coach Zimmer getting a head coaching job, the only reason he doesn't is because Marvin's got that voodoo doll in his closet. I said as long as he puts some more pins in that voodoo doll and Zimmer doesn't get a head coaching job, the Bengals will be okay on defense, period. They'll Four be fine. Down the street going, ouch! That's all they, yeah, that's all they need is Zimmer, period. All you need is love, all you need is Zimmer. That's all they need. Okay, now th secondarily, you could say put Burfitt in the middle and let Howard just kind of run the plays. Burfitt's not necessarily a born leader. He's, a little, he's passionate, but he's young. You definitely want Howard out there calling the plays and things like that. And obviously, I would like to see them mix in some three, four sets, chiefly because Sam Linebacker in the NFL, I don't think we could name any in the last 10 or 20 years that have done jack squat of any significance in any play. And any, there's, there's not one's like, oh, that, wow, he was such a stellar Sam. Like, Sam, what? In a 4-3, it's just it's outdated. So it'd be nice at least to work in some 3-4 sets or just something. Zimmer, you're, you're a genius. Could Change we, it up. Don't see make guys, that position Can we see what those three guys from uh, 2005 are doing these days? Maybe yeah, that's a there. good idea. Yeah. Um, I think Pollock's on ESPN. Who He's were doing they? doing good on there. there yes. <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys, uh, I think a lot of Bengals country is waiting for this team, obviously, to get to the playoffs and take the next step. They've done it with Carson. They've done it with Andrew Whitworth, Leon Hall, Chad Ochocinco, Johnson, whatever his name is now. If Geno Atkins sees the light of day in free agency, is that a mistake, or do you lock him up this offseason and begin that, those extension negotiations? I, I lock him up. Now, while I'm willing to let Michael Johnson walk just because you have depth, Geno Atkins is a all-pro player. He was a first-team all-pro, or they named him yesterday. You don't let guys like that walk, without question. You lock him up long-term. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in all season long. This is like our swan song I know, for a while. I'm sad. Thank you so much for coming in all season. Just Good hope he stuff. doesn't have a, have a voodoo doll of us. <laughs> That's right. All off season. Oh, my goodness.